Now we're going to get into a little bit of detail, nothing serious. This MTHFR gene, everybody knows what a gene is. Oh, it's one of those things that you have, it, 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 it's a program codes in your body. Yes, they are. It provides instructions for making an enzyme called methylfolate reductase. Enzyme plays a role in processing amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins. So, what's this gene? What is it talking about? What is a gene? All right. Well, here's what a gene is. And now, this is from the National U.S. National Library of Medicine. So, this is not. This is this is what they consider to be most, you know, most top shelf information. So, what is a gene? A gene is the basic physical and functional unit of heredity. So, it's an instructions. Some genes act as instructions. However, many genes do not code for proteins. Because the instructions say, here's how you're going to make this molecule. It's a protein. It is going to go out and do a job in biology. Well, some of them don't do that at all. Well, what do they do? Do not code for proteins. Well, what is a non-coding DNA. Only 1% of DNA is made up of protein coding genes. All the rest is like they thought was junk. The other 99% of non coding DNA does not provide instructions for making proteins. Scientists once thought non coding DNA was junk because they didn't know what it does. They still don't know what it does. And they, they, they're just sort of guessing now, but they realize it's not junk. Well, you have so many instruction sets in this, this sequencing of DNA that it's it, it, because you have so many things that need to be done in your body. These are codes and instructions, but they only talk to bacteria and other things to do those processes. The codes are codes. The codes don't do anything other than the instructions. No, no interaction whatsoever. However, the bacteria somehow gets this information from, it has to be from the, the brain, through what I think is the vagus nerve, the brain gut connection, and then it talks to the bacteria to say, here's what we need you to do. We need you to make us some enzymes. And these are the enzymes we need today because we got a lot of cadmium, we got some nickel, we got some silver, we got some this coming into us, and we, here's what you're going to have to make chemistry to deal with those products. That is what bacteria does. It creates an enzyme. The enzyme is the thing that does something. The code doesn't do anything. The bacteria does a lot of stuff, but it, primarily what we're talking about right now is an enzyme. And, and it, without the bacteria, you have no enzyme. Without the products in your body to break up the enzyme, I mean, the bacteria can't break the things if they're not there, so you still don't have the product. So it's relied upon having the right stuff in your body, having the bacteria to break it down, creating the enzyme, the enzyme going out and doing the job. That is the scenario. And right now, people don't have the products in their body. They don't have the bacteria because they've killed them with antibiotics. So they don't have the enzymes, so they get sick. So what does medicine do? They say, oh, it's got to be the program. The program's bad. The DNA's bad. So then they give you all kinds of stuff to mess around with your DNA and cause all kinds of different s s things in your body that it's not it's not the way it's supposed to work. So then you get all these it, drug interactions. Now, not only is it not junk DNA, listen to what it does. Non-coding DNA contains many types of regulatory elements. Regulatory. Promoters provide binding sites for proteins. Enhancers provide binding sites for proteins. Silencers provide binding, binding sites. Insulators provide binding sites. What is a binding site? It means where a molecule can come down and attach, and, and, and that's when they do the chemistry. It's a binding site. Receptors are binding sites. All right? They receive messages. When they have a binder that attaches, it says, whoa, 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 we got an issue down here. And then the vagus nerve sends it to the brain, says, what's the story? The brain says, hey, we got to give, uh, send down some 
some kind of an enzyme, so it activates one of the bacteria to create the enzyme. It is there's some kind of a brain gut connection. Let's talk about that. Because this is not this is this is a process and there is a series of 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 bacteria that create a series of enzymes that create a process of breakdown. Because if you take a big chunk of this and you say you cut it in half, you just got two pieces of it. You need to be able to take this little piece off, some oxygen, this one over here, some carbons, this one over here, some silicon, this one phosphorus. You need to be able to take the elements apart, and that requires a ton of different enzymes. That requires the DNA to know the process to turn something into something that the body uses, a, pro a, a product. And if it's, you don't have all the stuff in that entire sequence, you have to have the product available in its raw form. You have to have the bacteria that is available to create the enzymes, and enzymes have to be able to get to the products to break them down. That requires transition metals in the blood, circulation, and so forth. And it requires some kind of regulatory process, because you can't just send these things out to start breaking everything in your body. You can't do that. It has to be regulated. It's regulatory, the regulatory elements. So now, what is one of these things? An enzyme which promotes the chemical reduction of a specified substance is a reductase. And there's a bunch of different reductases that are intermediaries between the chunk and the particles you end up using. Those are called reductase. Now, the bacteria create the enzymes from amino acids, which are proteins. And when an enzyme is formed, it's made by stringing together between 100 and 1,000 amino acids. And those amino acids all hook together to form a program. And they fold into unique shapes. These proteins are all tangled and squirreled together and things. And that is their specific geometry that allows them to connect to other specific geometry and then somehow that specific geometry is related to uh, some kind of biological command and then it goes out and attaches and does all the things it has to do I mean it was built by some kind of biological command and then that product goes out and does what it has to do and this is about amino acids, proteins and enzymes it's all the same part of the same process now, I'm just going to come down here and show you what, you know, you, you have enzymes. Here's the classification of these different biological substances, and here's what their function is, and here's some examples. It's kind of hard to understand some of this stuff, but enzymes, which is what we're talking about, they accelerate biological reactions. As enzymes just go out and they break molecules out, they break them apart, they put them together, they do the chemistry. And it catalyzes hydrolysis of starch, glycogen. That's probably don't understand what it means, but it's just it's it, they do chemistry. They go out and they're chemistry sets. Well, then you got structural stuff. It provides strength and structure. Keratins, uh, collagens, and stuff like that. It's primary protein, hair, wool, bones, and all that stuff. Contractile. Those are your muscles. These are your the the, um, the proteins needed to contract muscles. Then you've got transport. Now, this is a transport, the transport substance from one place to another. Hemoglobin transports, well, they're metal complexes is what it is. Transition metal complexes are the transporters. Then you've got regulatory. That's what we were just talking about a minute ago. Regulatory functions. They are they're functions that regulate proteins. Because you can't have the proteins running wild. You have to regulate them. Insulin regulates the activity of specific enzymes in the body regulation. Then you got storage. Right? They provide storage of essential nutrients. You have to have stuff you can call on when you need power. Oberon stores amino acids in the egg white that will be used by developing birds. It just That's an example. Now, protection. Now, here's where they don't fully understand this. Protect cells or organisms from foreign substances. Amino immunoglobulins recognize and break down foreign molecules. Yes. However, who 
they're done by by different biological processes based around enzymes primarily in my world enzymes are the, are, are the chemistry set they accelerate biological reactions and they do the job of protection but who gets the enzymes there's nothing in here about bacteria the bacteria creates all of these things to do these jobs and if the bacteria is not present in my world, none of these things are going to happen. The bacteria runs your body. If your bacteria is bad, your body is not going to run. You're going to have all kinds of issues depending upon which bacteria are bad. doesn't matter. It's all digestion. It's all membrane. That, that's your immune system, is membranes. That is literally your immune system. The, everything on that side of the membrane is the world and goop and crap and acids and toxins and nastiness and everything inside of you is just the nicest stuff in the whole world <laughs> it's it's just sweet and cuddly inside of you but you get in that nasty stuff you got problems and if you break a hole in one of your walls that nasty stuff gonna come into your nice sweet cuddly stuff and break it all up in little pieces and make you sick like my son when I was trying to teach him about how you get sick <laughs> I said, like, yeah, yeah, things invade you. He said, what do you mean by that? I, I, you know, this is a long time ago, but I, it's, it ended up saying, I, the, the little things, Max, they come into you and they, they cause problems, you know. And he said, oh, sickers. And then from then on, it was, I think I got sickers coming on me, you know. Anyway, it's, um, and he's right, they were sickers. <laughs> it's, it's really based around your bacteria if your bacteria is good you're good and that is called the human microbiome now it's your gut bacteria and it's really a bacteria on every part of your body your whole body is coated inside and out with bacteria 100 percent. if it's not you are sick <laughs> you know the world's just upside down you say oh you got too much bacteria no you don't have enough <laughs>